Hi, it's Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You, where we talk about all things fun to knit and fabulous to wear. You know that I am usually live in this time slot, but tonight I have a wonderful pre-recorded presentation for you, an interview with the fabulous David McLeod, Rowan Brand Manager. So please help me welcome David McLeod. Ta-da. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Hello. There we go. Hi, David. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm as I was saying before we came on air. I've got a little bit of a cold, so do forgive me if I have to cough and clear my throat. So yeah. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm probably not going to be editing this, so it'll just be live and, and there it that's, is. And I think that's yeah, more fun. live and unfiltered. That's much how I prefer it, anyway. So. <laughs> Same. I don't know what it is. It just, I guess, it takes the pressure of being perfect away. Yeah. So I like that. Is. Yep. So I wanted to talk about your new yarn, Cotton Revive. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I love about Rowan is that I don't feel like the brand is pressured to bring out a new yarn every season. Right. So right. when there is a new yarn, it's special, right? Yeah. There's a reason. So is this your baby? Was this your yeah. baby? Yeah. It's kind of, they're all my babies, which is a bit sad, really. But I, as I mean, as you know, I'm a bit of a fibre geek, so I really get into all that things going on behind the scenes. Um, and you're right, we don't just bring out a yarn for the sake of it. They have to have a story. We have to believe in it as a brand. It gets knitted and tested by the whole team. So at any point, we can stop the development if the team go, this is just not working, it's not right, it's not, you know. So it, it Has that ever happened? Team. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> Literally, we are um, quite recently just just stopped development on something for next year, and it's just because the team have gone, I'm not feeling it. And, you know, and, and what's really good is they're all knitters and crocheters, and if they're not going to use it or don't want to make something with it, then really we shouldn't be looking at it. It's, you know, it has to come from the right place. So Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. I get that. I mean, typically when when I am considering a yarn to bring into the store, it's the same thing. You know, mm. I love that you guys send me a ball of it and I can knit with it and everybody can knit with it and say yay or nay. And you know, yeah. whether you bring it in or not, yeah. obviously I fell in love with cotton revive. So <laughs> how did that, how did that yarn come to be? Did you, were you thinking, Oh, we really need a sport weight cotton or yeah. what was the inspiration? It's Kind of, because um, we have a really good stable of cottons in Rowan anyway. We've got some beautiful cottons in there. So um, for a spring, summer season, we're always trying to find something new, which is quite difficult because a lot of people just show the usual cottons and kind of, um, and this one kind of fitted into our um, our recycle, our sustainability, because we have that criteria going on as well, because we're a natural fiber based brand, as you know. So we obviously have um, Denim Revive, and I like to think this is the sister, it's Cotton Revive. So it's kind of quite a similar process in lots of ways, but it's just, it's another cotton that, um, and it's not just the denim yarn that's recycled. And it, it, it is just about bringing that, um, something new into the cotton range for us. Because if you, I don't, I, if you, it feels quite linen-y, this cotton, doesn't it? It does. It's it's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to gush, you know, um, <laughs> but I really do like it. And, you know, you and I have talked many times before mm. about um, mm. how our favorite, we share the same favorite yarn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, um, this yarn has that same modern construction, that chain at construction. Yeah, it does. Right. Um, um so so let's back up a minute. Um, yeah. This this yarn, I look at this and I think, okay, this is a beautiful yarn. And I would love this yarn whether or not it had the story. Oh, we have the same little swatch on our needles, don't no, we? No, I've got my presenter folder, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I have my little swatch. I'm actually doing a live presentation on this yarn tonight uh, on my okay. channel, so you can tune in and see that. Um, right. You'll be fast asleep. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the British time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, so I love this yarn regardless of the story. So let's talk a little bit about the construction, the mm. modern construction mm. of this, this mm. chainette. And yeah. did you know you were bringing in a chainette yarn? Um, that, not that specifically, started? kind of. Um, what chainette does is actually 
is it's really good for particular types of fiber. Um, and so we don't go looking for a particular modern construction, but what I really like about Chainette, and this goes for the beautiful soft yak as well, because that's our favorite, woo, woo, um, is that it actually allows you to use the precious fiber in the best form you possibly can get it and get the good um, meterage on your ball and so forth, because you're using the fiber in that modern way. So it's, and obviously you're adding elasticity in and you're adding strength in the construction because it's a loop. You're not simply relying on the staple fiber strength. You're adding it in by adding the chainette in there. So that's why I like chainette. And what chainette does for the recycled cotton is actually, that's exactly what it does. It adds that elasticity. It gives you that construction and it gives you that um, crisp feel that you get with that linen. And that's kind of why we looked at taking this fiber into a chainette because actually it's going to give you a different texture in your knitted fabric than a normal um, cotton or a brushed cotton or a mercerized cotton. It's got that crisp look. It's got a slight marl effect in the color as well because it's a recycled. And it just gives you um, a really defined knit fabric is what I call it. But what's going to happen with this is, it, is as you wash and wear it like a cotton, it's going to behave beautifully. It's going to hold its shape. It's going to, you know, it's going to last you a long, long time. And the thing for it is, is I know this is something that you're passionate about, Ellie. It's going to take shape beautifully. It's yeah. going to take construction. It's going to take that increase and decrease stitch. Going to take um, crochet stitch really well as well because of its definition of its fiber, the way it's put together. Yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, I don't know that much about the process of recycling and reclaiming yarn. I know it's 80% uh, uh, recycled cotton and 20% recycled. Did I get that right? Is it yeah, 80%? that's right. Okay. It's 100% it's recycled. Right. It's 80% cotton and 20% other fiber. Right. Now, part of your labeling law, that's the only time you're allowed to use it is in a recycled product is this 20% other fiber. I think in our denim revive, we say 5% other fiber because that's a much narrower source. So this is kind of where you take all the cotton, it's um, post-consumer, some of it's um, waste from production as well. And what happens is you can never, because it's recycled and a natural recycling process, there is always some other fat, um, fiber in there. And that is why you're allowed to say it. all that 20% is made up of small little bits of other fiber that you can't actually quantify. And that's when you're allowed to do it. Um, right. Because it just all that goes up to make that 20%. Yeah, sure. Stitching and things like that. Yeah, that just exactly. get in, get in yeah. there. But mm. so I've seen other uh, fibers, other recycled fibers, you know, from other companies, you mentioned denim revive. Um, this, this does not to me read recycled a lot of times when i think recycled fibers you know <laughs> yeah. yeah this feels um crisp and luxurious yeah. and yeah. you know it feels it feels like something that you, you know <laughs> sometimes you eat organic fruit <laughs> even yeah. though it's ugly <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you know it's organic and whatever yeah. but this is like the most beautiful and you know all of that other stuff behind it is sort yeah. of a yeah. bonus right well it does it does come to us in a slightly different way so so talk about that so for instance in our denim revive that's all from denim and it's sorted and then it's sent to us and it's stripped down washed and dyed and managed to become the process whereas this cotton revive they come in as finished bales of fiber to our spinning plant so they're already pre-sorted in color and pre-sorted to take out as much as they can as the other bits and bobs, but they come in as a finished color bale. So what that means is in our spinning process, we don't do any further dyeing or washing in it. It's just um, stripping it back and making it back into fiber to then work it into the chain at construction. The colors are pre-sorted obviously to go into bales and there is some obviously some color stabilization and they take out all the other bits and bobs, but it does mean that they're actually it comes in already as a stabilized color, if you like. Now, we need to be careful when we say stabilized because anything re recycled, you know, there is slight color variation and you have to accept that in a recycle. Um, 
color palette. But then that's obviously why we also see the slight marling effect in there. Um, so, you know, there may be some slight change between the actual lots of yarn that you get. But Well, you would expect that anyway. I mean, yeah, exactly. there's going to be dye lots. But I mean, I think that's really interesting because the, one of the things that really stands out to me about this yarn versus other um, recycled yarns and even other cotton yarns is that the colors are so clean. Mm. They're mm. so clear. They're not... Um, I don't know. They're, they're not muddy. They're, yeah, they're, I was going to say um, muddy. Yeah, exactly. And I was quite surprised when we started looking at it because I thought all we're going to end up is like, you know, a muddy green or muddy brown and maybe <laughs> exactly. the orange. But actually, it's not like that at all. And I think that's the way it's supplied because we're taking stuff from original recycle and post uh, pre-consumer and post-consumer. I think the majority is post-consumer. When I say pre-consumer, I mean the cutoffs from other productions and stuff. You do actually get quite a clean color bale coming in. So that means that we can have those colors that are available to us in those shades. When I think pre-consumer, post-consumer, mm. I think pre-consumer meaning like when they're making the clothing, yeah, the cotton clothing, exactly. like scraps yeah. and things like that. Post-consumer is like when somebody's worn it and turned it in to be- Yeah, and they put recycled. it back to be recycled. And then that's when they sort them by their fiber, they strip out maybe the button bands, the zips, the butt, you know, the buttons and all that. And then the true breakdown of that fiber goes to add it into the uh, pre-consumer fiber as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing, uh, when you're doing, so it goes to your milling. When you're doing the yeah. milling and the spinning, so obviously for a chainette construction, you need to spin that really fine mm. so that it can then be created into a multi-strand chainette. Yeah, exactly. And that's how you do that, right? Yeah, it's just basically what they put, it comes in in a bale and that is big strips of fabric, lots of different sizes and, you know, and then it just goes through the cutting, like the carding machine on for wool or for normal fiber. They just cut it, card it, shred it back down until it gets to the fiber that is needed to be spun. And then they, as you exactly what you say, Ellen, they take it back in and they spin it like a normal spin would be on any yarn, but they're just using uh, recycled fiber as the source. It does have a really crisp feel. Mm. You know, I... I'm excited about it. I think part of what I like in chain it in general is like you say, the, the stitch definition, I'm looking at my little swatch as I'm talking <laughs> here. Um, but also, you know, when you have a chain it, cotton doesn't always hold its shape. It doesn't. Mm, exactly. Hold its yeah. So you can't really push its gauge. Mm. Um, this is build as like 26, 27 stitches over yeah. centimeters, which is pretty fine. But it, it feels to me like you could knit this at 22. Yes, um, exactly. Right? Don't you the think? The thing is, for it, that's what I was thinking of it, is it's actually quite a versatile gauge knit because it will stand more air in your stitch, but it, you can knit it tighter as well. I mean, obviously, you would need to see what it feels like for you and what garment you're going to make and how that's going to work for you on your body. But you're totally right. It's really versatile in that. And that again, that is what Chainette does. That's why Soft Jack is so brilliant because it's that stitch. It's one of my tips. I'm sure you've heard me say this. If you're not the neatest of knitters, knit with a chainette because it relaxes back into your stitch and makes it look an awful lot neater. <laughs> you know, cotton is quite a hard knit. I'm not a cotton knitter. I'm much more of a, a, a wool or my Soft Jack or anything because cotton can be quite uneven if you're not a great tension knitter. Um, but this one actually helps you out in that situation because of that chain. It, it does relax back in and it gives you some elasticity in cotton, which you don't normally get. Exactly. And it makes it so much more pleasant <clears throat> to knit. I think one of the things mm. about knitting with cotton that's a, applied cotton is that you have to go down a needle size because there isn't there that elasticity in it. So you're right. knitting at a tighter than maybe comfortable yeah. gauge, which makes the process not that pleasant. And yeah. I mean, even with a beautiful cotton, like um, I'm wearing a summer light DK sweater, even mm -hmm. with a beautiful brushed cotton like this, yeah. knitting that tightly 
isn't as much fun because you are on a smaller needle and everything just seems a little more cramped. Yeah. And you get with, like, you start getting yeah. <laughs> like, shoulders away from the ears. Yeah. <laughs> but with the chainette, it's like the opposite. You know, you think, okay, I usually get 22 on a six. You might need a seven, you know, mm. four millim a four and a half millimeter to get that gauge with a yarn that's this bouncy. So yeah. it makes the whole process more pleasant. And it does allow it to be used in more versatile ways because obviously in the little collection we've done, we've got crochet as well as um, knit in there, but we've got open stitch in there too. It can actually take that drape a bit more, whereas some other cottons, it actually, the drape will just drop, whereas this actually has movement in its drape because of the construction. So Yes. Yes, because I know you know this, so I'm telling my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my audience. Um, <laughs> You know, the thing about that chain up construction, as I was saying, and as you know, it's made of those fine, fine fibers. Mm -hmm. So they each maintain their individual drape so that you get a better drape yeah, overall. Exactly. Like, which I, I just think it's magical. And I was really surprised, um, like I said, as the color palette. Did you mm -hmm. did you have a chance to look at and they, they say, okay, here are the here are the colors of pre-sorted scraps that we have yeah. um and you got to choose yeah here let me um yeah it's not it doesn't it. usually work quite like that with a recycled yarn is because more often than not they tell us what's available and what um you can actually have and then we work what's available into a rowan palette right because but i noticed there's no purple <laughs> no no purple um that wasn't on the offer for it okay. but um, it's actually not a bad palette for um it's 10 shades we decided to not go above that that's quite a good shade but um you know we've got a really quite a nice clean white in there as well you know oh it's, yes yes which is really unusual in recycled as well but i'm trying to have... grab my balls back my yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have a whole pack and then pack some, of some of the neutrals it's like i said you know you think you're going to get like a muddy brown because they just mix in all the colors together but it actually We've got some nice defined colors in here too. I really like this one, the, that, kind of, that rose, rose yes. orange, uh, it's cherry blossom. Yes. I think it's like a rose pink. It's, it's beautiful. Just, it's a really, it's a soft pink. And I don't like a pink pink. I don't like pink to be too pink. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think there's a bad pink because it's no, not color, but <laughs> there's not. I it's get what you're pink. saying. I mean, my total favorite is blue. That's, I'm much more up this end, but. And I do quite like the teal. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I like that's the teal though. That's that, the color of my, of my dressing room at home, the teal. So. That's gorgeous. So that's already been a good seller for us, that uh, ocean, mm. ocean color. Yeah. That dark blue green. The ocean, the dark teal, yeah. yeah cool. That is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it is a good palette and I think it would work together. Uh, so how do you think this yarn would work in um, in any kind of color work? I know um, cotton glacé tends to be like Cape's go-to for yeah, color Kate, work. Yeah. But don't, how do you think you would like this? Well, I think, um, I don't know, I don't actually know. <laughs> he kind of likes what he likes, but also um, there's not really enough color in palette in there for him to play with. Correct, um, yes. And that's good kind point. of what would stop him using it is because he 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 would like to have more of a palette i'm sure that he would i'm say sure that. you're right i'm sure i'm not hopefully i'm not putting words in his mouth but um that's why he works in felted tweed and the cotton glacé and because we've got a range of color in those um i do think it would work quite well for cotton uh for color because again that relaxing stitch back into itself it's going to fill so it's going to be it's going to treat you nice to do co uh, color work in it yeah so it, it could work quite nicely. I think so too. I think it would actually be kind of pretty special. If you're, you mm. know, if you're doing like three or four color, you know, the whole in the round stranded thing that yeah. a lot of people are doing. And even though it's cotton and we think um, we only do stranded for kinds of winter sweaters, I don't think that's necessarily the case. And I think this is a, a perfect option for people who can't wear wool mm. or for people who live in places where, it's just too hard. yeah yeah you know and that's the other thing as well it's not because it's chain it's not a dense um fiber it's not a dense yarn i was trying to think of the right word there so it, it can be quite light in areas you wear it as well so it's going to it's going to work for a lot of different climates in there as well so yeah and and the construction again it's like 
I think I wrote in the blog this this week. Um, it's like having a the windows open and the breeze coming. Through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that constructs. So even you know, I'm on a, quite a small needle here, and I'm going to measure the gauge, but the fabric is not stiff, and it hasn't been you can no. struggle to knit with. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, is what we did with some of our test garments is obviously they get washed and worn and knitted and stuff. And I, it does, it re, I can't, it really does wash really well, guys. It's really, really one of those things that it's like denim, you know, you might, after you wash it, it's crisp, but after you've worn it for an hour, it's much more softer and kind of, it totally behaves like that as well. It's kind of um, one of those that's going to drape beautifully once you're wearing it um, and it uh, keep, retains its shape as well. So how did you and the team go about putting together the collection that supports this yarn? The, the designs in there, I think, are really pretty. You know, I'm all about knitting a capsule wardrobe and, you know, wearing your hand every yeah. day. So what went into that? It's a really great collection. I mean, the thing for us was actually a lot of discussion with Lisa, who's um, kind of led that uh, collection in design and brief. And it was actually about having, because we've, done some options there so there's a plain uh not plain vest but a simple knit vest and then we've done it as an open stitch as well and it's actually exactly what you said it's about that capsule wardrobe so you've got options and actually you could wear this under a cotton blouse or a cotton shirt and actually it's not going to add you bulk or heaviness there and that's actually where we started with lisa how would you wear this what what is going to work and how does that work in a garment and then we obviously have to think about um, making sure we have a range of offer there. So it's not all tight little crops. There's some drape pieces. There's some oversized stuff going in there as well because, you know, knit to fit, as you say, Ellen, you know, you choose how you want to wear it and knit the garment that's appropriate for you. So we try to cover all that there. But it was actually about that and showing definition in those stitches. So crochet and knit in there, there's, we've played a little bit with them um, with uh, texture in the stitch as well, because it does take, it shows that really well because it's such a crisp yarn and it's defined like that. So yes. it's all those things coming together to try and make it work as a piece, as, as a wardrobe, yeah. I kind of see this, I mean, you know, I live in the mid-Atlantic DC area. I see this as a four season yarn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it more is. and more of our yarns are now, whether we want them to or not. People just knit them all year anyway. So, <laughs> Right. So I think um, like um, this, your Four Seasons obviously is designed to be that. Mm, yeah. um, cotton cashmere. Yeah, cotton Soft cashmere. Soft jack DK yeah. for sure. Um, <coughs> you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. And obviously somebody in, you know, in the far north or, you know, where it's, really, really cold in the winter. They're probably not going to be wearing something cotton, but yeah, yeah I see this as, as a all year round, you know, and especially that oversized drop shouldered sweater yeah. shown in that ocean color. Mm. And that to me is a perfect, like a fall piece, you know, yeah. neutral because here it gets to be September, October. It's still really hot. Yeah. But you're not going to be wearing spring colors. No. So, but that's the thing as well, is it, it it's great for uh, layering. So you can layer it in a multiple of temperate as well because of the way it it's not adding bulk but giving you that covering. So yeah. that's why we've done, you know, we've done those little vest tops, we've done some shawls, we've done some scarves, but we've also done that, like you said, that drop shoulder blue sweater. There's the sweater that's in the round with the cabling as well. And then there's that short sleeved um it's like a what i call a drape over cardigan it kind of sits on your shoulders and drapes over there's one of those in there as well and that's all about adding the layering pieces so um you can wear that year round no problem yeah i can see doing one of the little you call it a little vest i call that a knitted camisole with yeah the narrow yeah, straps true. yeah i can see doing that and one of the cardigans in the same color and having yeah. kind of a modern twin set. oh that'd be great twin set piece yeah don't you think mm -hmm. Perfect, yeah. yeah I think sure. that would be really, really good. Really cute. Mm. So um, do you do you see more colors coming out? How will that go? Will the will the company that or the organization, I don't even know how you do that. The people <laughs> that people that provide you yeah, with well, the color the, the options. They will they will tell us the color fibers that we um, are available to us. I'm sure there's more to come. Um, because the other thing is is 
we buy those finished bales um, and then we take those bales and make them into knitting yarn. Other people buy those bales and then make them into something else. We, you know, it's not that that source is a source. It's not just for us. It's actually the way that um, we do that. So right. there, there will be more colors added because there's more there's more people than just Rowan looking at that development, if you like. So how dare they? <laughs> well, they can take the yarn and do the fiber and do something else with it is, if they like. That's the thing. <laughs> so there's sort of a a bit of a scarcity associated with this. I mean, this is hmm. this is how much there is, and these are the colors, and this is it because yeah. <laughs> so it's not you know it's not like endless availability. That's kind of good to know. You know. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with it is, is when we if we were to go back and say like, all oh, right, we need more of that teal of the ocean color or whatever. They may say, ah, you can't have that at the moment. You might have to wait until we have the color source there. And that is just the nature of the beast. And that's, you know, um, one of the limitations of using recycled fiber, but it's also one of the joys is that actually it is slow fashion. That's what we're doing here. We're not, we're not generating, we are using pre and post consumer. Um, and that's, you know, sometimes you just have to wait for that. And maybe the world would be better if we all just had to wait sometimes, you know? I think the world would be lots better if we were all a little more patient with ourselves, with the world. Yeah, I know. So let's, let's talk a little bit about your, sort of your vision and, and why this is so important to you mm. for this whole recycled and... So it kind of it encompasses the whole brand for me. I mean... I mean, you know my background, Ellen, I'm a farmer's son and I know all the fibres and kind of, it's always, I was always brought up to respect every living thing and every living animal. And it's about making the best use of that fibre that we can have in in the world. And that goes for those plant-based fibres, the cottons and everything. We cannot simply keep producing and producing and producing. We have to look at sustainable ways to use natural fibre, so um, wool, yak, cashmere whatever and those plant fibers you know it makes sense that we recycle and we make the best of the use that we can and it's kind of it's not i wouldn't say that rowan is we're charging forward with a green flag we are just being respectful and careful about what we do and thinking about it sustainably you know when we look at a new yarn and we look at something i ask those questions where is that from how do you get it has it are they part of the association in that country because most countries have an association of um animal welfare and people welfare and you know we have an uh, fiber associations all over the world and we work with them closely to make sure that everybody in the process is treated fairly um and treated correctly so it's kind of all wrapped up into that one bigger brand thing for me as as brand manager that's something that i try to do all the time I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, and it's not like, you know, a lot of times you get um, the accusation of it being, um, what's the word that somebody said to me, virtue signaling. Yeah, or greenwashing. Or, right, yeah. right. Yeah. I, I don't see that here. <laughs> and I, I also feel like it's really important to row in and you're maybe slower to this because you're not interested in doing that and trying to say, hey, hey, we're green too. Yeah. Um, and you have to be true to the brand as one of elegance and quality and, mm. you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, whatever we bring has to pass all those tests and tests that we do. And then it has it has to have that story and the criteria behind it. So nothing would get through the gates, if you like, if it only opened one gate and didn't open the other. We're not doing one thing at the cost of another thing. It, it has to work in all, um, all ways. Yeah, I love that. So, so do you see more of this kind of thing for Rowan? Or, I mean, it's sort of been the whole traceability. Yeah. And um... I think what's quite interesting for me, and this is kind of, it's part of my background thing, is that knitters, crafters, I get, are much more savvy now. They're able to ask those questions that mean companies, and I don't just mean Rowan, this, any companies, are actually making sure that they're asking those questions and those people that supply that are able to answer them. And that has taken a long time to happen, but actually it's led by the people at the front end, the crafters, the knitters, the grocers, asking those questions. And now it's started to come from the other way. So 
everything's presented and they go, yes, we know where that comes from. We could do this, we do this. And, you know, it's Ecotech certified and it's all started to come the other way, which is all to the good because it just means that every step in the process is ticked and um, everybody's, like I say, everybody's treated fairly, you know, in the process. And that's important, you know. How do you label that? How can a consumer know? I mean, obviously, I think you could feel comfortable buying anything from Rowan. Um, but if a company, if a, if a consumer didn't know Rowan, could they pick up a skein of your yarn and see something on the label that would indicate to them that this is a carefully thought through, traceable, eco-friendly kind of yeah. product? We don't have an overall like marker because everything has its own story. So obviously like we have um, like our um, mohair comes from the Mohair Association in Africa and that actually in South Africa and that kind of, they regulate that industry over there. And obviously our alpaca is regulated um, through in Peru. And obviously that's a slightly different regulation than mohair is. And then cotton, it's obviously not necessarily about the, there's no animal involvement there, but it's actually where it's come from and that it's sustainably sourced. And the, it's so it's kind of hard to put something across all of them. It's just kind of, for me, it's about the brand statement and about um, me standing behind the bit that I do that I source and kind of go, I do check it and we do find out the good stuff as well as the, I mean, and there is stuff, you know, we have stuff in history that we've stopped and we've no longer produced because we weren't happy with the story that we were told. Really? Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to tell you what it was. but No, no, but I'm not <laughs> asking. I'm, just, I'm not well, never embarrassed like that. Has, we have made a decision to stop because um, we actually checked it out and we thought this is not right. We're not hearing the story here. So that's it. We're not going any further. And that's yeah. that's really important for me that the company that I work for supports us as a brand to do that. You know, it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like my mother used to say, if you don't know jewels, know your jeweler. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us knows jewels, but I do think that I I'm pleased and proud that Rowan is doing this. I'm, I'm proud to be a flagship store and to be able to. Well, you're a fantastic to... flagship for us. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, it, you guys make it easy, you know, okay. bringing beautiful products in and the designs that support them and the story and just being such a great organization. So I, you know, I appreciate what you do and I especially appreciate your time today to talk oh, about. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun to see you. And, um, yeah, maybe maybe sometime soon we'll we'll see each other in New York or maybe. Yeah, well, it's, it's been a long time now. It's over a year since we saw each other in the flesh, Ellen. So. Yes, <laughs> yes, but uh, not too long. I plan to go to H and H next year. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's so. earlier next year. That's what I would say. It's at the start of March next year. Yes. Well, I, this year's a busy year for me. I don't have time to do anything at all. But um, anyway, it's it's been absolutely lovely to talk to you. And Thank you. I'm excited about the yarn. And you will, if you're watching, you will see more about this yarn. I'm using it for lots and lots of cool stuff this year. So, um, and you heard David, if you, if you like it and you want it, it's limited. So go ahead and get that. Again, thank you so much, David. Thank I look you. We're talking to you again soon. Thanks, Ellen. Thank uh, you, everyone. Bye-bye.